Okay, we're looking at Ohm's Law. And Ohm's Law is named after George Simon Ohm, who lived in the 1700s to 1800s. He formulated a uh, basic relationship between voltage and current and showed that for many materials, if the resistance is constant, we get a straight line. When we plot the current as a function of the voltage. So very simply, Ohm's Law states that voltage is equal to current times resistance. This goes back to the definition of resistance. Resistance was how much voltage we need for a particular current. Uh, so this equation is just sort of a restatement of our definition of resistance. In any case, we can manipulate this law uh, many different ways. We can write it in its most traditional form, V equals IR. We can solve for current instead. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Or finally, we can calculate the resistance as a function of the voltage divided by the current. So V equals IR, very useful equation. We're going to use it uh, for many of the, the chapters coming up. It allows us to characterize what's going on in a particular electric circuit uh, relating voltage, current, and resistance. Here is the plot of current versus voltage for what we call an ohmic device. This would be like a precision resistor that we showed before, where if the resistance is constant, since the slope here is inversely proportional to um, 1 over r, the uh, slope should be constant um, if uh, the resistance never changes. Some devices, however, do change the resistance as a function of current and voltage. In these types of devices, then R is not constant. We don't get a straight line. And probably the most uh, common device, which does not follow Ohm's law, would be a diode. Now, a diode is a semiconducting material. It's actually a sandwich of two materials put together. One is an n-type uh, semiconductor where extra electrons have been doped into it by adding uh, a specific type of impurity. The other type is a p-type, p for positive, where extra holes are created by uh, putting other types of impurities. But in any case, when we send a voltage across a diode, up until a uh, voltage that's defined here as VF, it's a turn-on voltage, uh, it'll have a very, very high resistance. But suddenly, as we approach this, the resistance drops, and eventually, what happens, the resistance becomes very low. Now, light-emitting diodes have this uh, property that as long as you stay below this activation voltage, um, you won't get any light. The electricity you put through it will have a very difficult time flowing. But once you reach this critical voltage, all of a sudden you have enough energy to get the uh, electrons to jump across what's called a band gap. They give up their energy and that produces light. So a diode is a very good example of a non-ohmic device where the resistance drops after some critical voltage. Now again, V equals IR is very important because it allows us to, to solve for one of the unknowns if you know two of the other properties. For instance, let's say we have a 680 ohm resistor and it's carrying 26.5 milliamps. Well, what is the potential difference across this? We know what the resistance is. We know how much current is flowing across there. And given that the resistance is the amount of voltage per current, we can solve for the voltage as V equals IR. Here's your current. Here's your resistance. That requires 18 volts to get that much current through. Another example of solving. Now we're going to solve for resistance given voltage and current. Let's say that I have a light bulb right here. I measure that there's 0.87 amps going through it. I know it's plugged into a 115 volt power source. That's house current. What is the resistance? R equals V over I. 115 divided by 0 0.87. I have 132 ohms in the filament, if that's an incandescent bulb, um, that is... Uh, that the current is traveling through there. Again, 
Now we're going to solve for a current as a function of voltage and resistance. V equals IR. I can divide both sides by R. That gives me I equals V over R. We have a dryer here. It's an electric dryer. It's plugged into a 240 volt outlet. Some of the larger appliances in your house will actually be hooked to 240 volts as opposed to most outlets being 115, 120. Okay. At 100, I'm sorry, at 240 volts with a resistance of 20 ohms, maybe the nichrome heating elements um, have a total resistance of, of 20 ohms. We can calculate the current. I is equal to V, 240, divided by R, 20, and that requires 12 amps of current to run the dryer. Now, um, electrical safety is very, very important because most electrical fires in homes are actually created by uh, damaged electrical wires or, or overheated electrical wires. Uh, so it's very, very important uh, when designing the wiring system for a home to use the proper wires. It's very important not to overuse extension cords and not to plug too many things in. Each wire is rated uh, according to a particular gauge. These are all copper wires. And the gauge number tells you basically how thick it is. Now, with wire, the way that they used to make it is they would have some thickness for the wire and then they draw it through a die to make it progressively thinner and thinner. So one gauge wire would be drawn once. If you drew it twice, it would be two gauge wire. If you drew it four times, you get the idea. Uh, most of the wires in your house, the, 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 the smallest gauge, which is a gauge of 14, uh, the number is large, the thickness is, is small. The smallest diameter wire that we typically use in a home is 14 gauge wire. Uh, 12 gauge is, is used quite a bit. 10 gauge is used for larger loads. You might even have eight and six uh, gauge wire for the really thick wires. And the wires leading to your house usually are made out of aluminum and they'll be uh, double zero. We call that uh, double aught or triple aught wire depending on how much current you want traveling in there. So again, you see as the wires get smaller and smaller, the number of ohms per kilometer gets greater and greater. As the wires get thicker and thicker, obviously the resistance is going to decrease also. This is actually a little tool which is used to determine the gauge of the wire. You can put the wire through these and see you know, how uh, thick the wire is. This is a penny just for uh, scale size. You can see single out wire is actually quite thick. Again, you don't see a lot of this type of wire uh, used throughout your house. Um, again, you've got a really big appliance, let's say an air conditioning unit, um, a oven, a electric oven, electric uh, heater. Um, then you might be going to these bigger gauges, eight gauge, six gauge. Um, but again, most of the, the house is going to be uh, no bigger than, than uh, you know, 20 amp circuits. So maybe 10 and 12 gauge is pretty popular. Um, and in, in the cheapest wiring, the smallest gate, the smallest diameter wiring would use 14 gauge. And again, you can see these different wires. Um, obviously, these are not single strand wires. These are uh, braided wires, so they're not you know, drawn out through the die like uh, we talked about earlier. But uh, here is um, one gauge wire that can carry 125 amps. Most homes aren't rated for more than 200 amps, so your service coming in would probably be aluminum, um, aluminum double, you know, you know, double out wire rather than single out wire. Um, again, you know, for high current um, appliances, eight gauge or 10 gauge, here you can see they carry 30 or 40 amps. Um, most of your house, however, is going to be wired um, with 12 gauge uh, up to about 14 gauge in, at, at worst. Let's take a look at resistivity and resistance.
we're going to take a look at 12 gauge wire and the diameter of 12 gauge wire is 2 times 10 to the negative 3 meters so it's about um, you know about a diameter of 2 millimeters or, or uh, roughly a cross section of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared copper wire it's going to be 10 meters long what is its resistance well the resistance of a wire as we said earlier is equal to the resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. Now we've already done this calculation for you for the area, so I'm going to substitute that down right here. 10 meters of wire, about 30 feet. Um, copper has a really low resistivity, and we see that that type of wire, 12 gauge wire, has a resistance of about 0 0.051 ohms really doesn't slow down the flow of current very much and that's good the wire is not going to get hot one way you can always tell if you're sending too much current through a wire is if you touch it and it feels warm it feels hot you're really in trouble but um you know whenever you plug something in that the the conducting wire really shouldn't be more than slightly warm you know if it's if it's really obviously warm you're probably drawing too much current through that wire, which means that wire has too much resistance for what you're trying to uh, put through in amps. Temperature variation for resistance, we know that just like resistivity, the resistance will increase as you increase the temperature. Uh, whatever the resistance is at 20 degrees, the new resistance will go by this equation right here, which means that, again, this alpha, this temperature coefficient, determines how much a metal will increase in resistance as you go above that 20 degrees Celsius. In this particular case, we want to calculate the resistivity of 12 gauge wire. That's copper. Now, this is not the resistivity of copper. This is actually the temperature coefficient. Um, it's 10 meters in length at 35 degrees Celsius. Now, previously, we saw at 20 degrees Celsius, a copper wire it's going to have a resistance of 0 0.051 ohms. So now we're going to go from 20 degrees to 35 degrees. We're going to increase this part of the equation by about 10%. So we expect the resistance to go up by 10%. The new resistivity at this new temperature is going to be slightly higher. This creates a problem. Once you start drawing more current through a wire, okay, it's going to heat up and its resistance is actually going to increase causing it to heat up even more. And that can create a, a very dangerous situation where is if you reach the flash point of any material touching this wire, you can start a fire. So again, um, the resistance does change as we change the temperature.